to win a Super Bowl, you can't just be more talented than your opponent. Sometimes you need to outsmart them as well, and the Chiefs certainly did that throughout the course of this postseason. These are the top 10 times the Kansas City Chiefs outsmarted their opponents. Starting off with this play, what you're going to see is this is what the kind of, you know, a couple of these are going to be less just specific plays and more so things they did in a specific game. So the Dolphins, at a certain point, you know, they had no pass rushers as both their edge rushers uh, were, went down with season ending injuries and they were just heavy blitzing the, uh, you know, Kansas City Chiefs constantly. That was kind of their strategy. I think a lot of teams in this situation would maybe try to play aggressive back, try to go down the field, get big plays that way. The Kansas City Chiefs, however, were a lot more patient in their approach. That's what they're going to do. They're just going to have two players run routes designed to get open past the first down marker. You see that this kind of essentially a rubber route right here. It works. You have a player open. Pressure is about to come, but Mahomes can still get rid of the football quickly enough. That's what he does. They pick up a first down. They get the uh, you know, conversion there. Really good job by Marquez Valdez Scantling as well. But you know, really smart play by the uh, Chiefs and smart mindset in general. And while we're on kind of more general topics before we get into the specific plays, what's going to happen on this one is it's a zone coverage play. That's what the Bills were doing a lot of, playing a lot of zone. But you see the safety. He is currently lined up very far towards the bottom of the screen. So because of that, this concept right here actually could be you know, pretty impactful, and it's going to get even better. When Mahomes takes a snap, he looks in that direction. He's going to eventually fire in that direction, and you see nobody picked up Travis Kelsey. Really, the Chiefs were just consistently doing a good job at scheming this stuff up, and let's be honest, Mahomes isn't going to miss that. Gets the touchdown right there. The Chiefs were constantly frustrating the Bills with some of these plays. So those are more kind of general concept stuff. That's number nine on the list. But for number eight, let's go to a specific play. But let's stay in Buffalo. It's this play. It's a fourth down and five. And for the Bills, you know, I mean, basically no one was getting any stops at this point. So the second there was a fourth and five, you kind of understood the logic for Buffalo of not wanting to give the ball to the other team. But when they start this fake punt, you see a Kansas City player, I mean, really, they're, they're just all over this. They're prepared for this. And it reminds me a little bit of against the Houston Texans. That was Daniel Sorensen who read a play and got a, a good fake punt, uh, you know, tackle to avoid the fake punt converting. Uh, here it's Buffalo. As you see, Kansas City is able to, you know, the, you know everyone able to come through and stop uh, DeMar Hamlin, in fact, from being able to pick up the first down. Again, just being prepared for anything that can happen. That's just a really well done job by them. Number seven is just the coin toss and really just understanding the general rules of overtime. It seemed like the 49ers were a little bit confused about certain aspects of overtime, whereas the Chiefs apparently knew every single aspect of it. And that was kind of the what was talked about is they knew exactly what to expect. Not sure how much that mattered for their perspective, but hey, uh, for the 49ers, they didn't do a great job of, you know, they won the coin toss, probably shouldn't have uh, received, probably should have kicked instead. Number six, this is against Baltimore. It's kind of an underrated play, but a really important one as the Chiefs. First off, the first outsmarting thing is just going for it on fourth and two. Like, that's a smart play by them. But also the concept itself. So usually this play is designed to go towards the bottom of the screen. That's what you're supposed to typically do. However, when this play begins, Baltimore actually has it pretty well covered up. And so this time, you know, a lot of these other plays are like, you know, smart by Andy Reid, smart by the coaching staff, by kind of everyone involved. This time, it's just Mahomes himself. He's going to go through his progressions and realize that it's Travis Kelsey down the field, who he's the actual guy who Mahomes should be throwing to. A lot of quarterbacks wouldn't realize this, but Mahomes is able to get over there. He makes the throw. Really athletic play by him and Kelsey, of course, but smart just by you know, really, Andy Reid just going for it. That, that's why it's on the list, but also really smart by Mahomes as well to make the play work. Number five, we're staying in Baltimore here as it's going to be a really important play in this game. You know, it was kind of, it felt like the Chiefs were dominating all game, but all of a sudden with two minutes and 19 seconds left, if the Ravens get a stop, the Chiefs have to give, have to give the ball back and the Ravens, you know, they kept screwing up, but they were moving the ball. So the way this play is going to work is it's man coverage. They have a receiver who could take away the safety's route, but here's really the smart uh, value play by the Chiefs. A first down is the same as, you know, a 50-yard bomb, right? First down ices the game, so you're not really expecting them to go deep. But they're going to have Marquez Valdez-Scantling run a deep route because, hey, that's what he's good at, and you're taking the safety out of the way, and the corner isn't going to be prepared for it. 
as you see, when Mahomes takes a snap, he is going to look in that direction. He fires in that direction. And right here, there is absolutely a window for this play to be made. Again, Mahomes doesn't miss it. Valdez Scantling does a good job of adjusting and making the grab. That is number five on the list. Number four, so this one, the less famous one, which is going to be Mahomes is going to, uh, you know, uh, fake as though it's going to be a handoff towards the offense's left. And again, this is an important part in the game. We're past the midway point in the third quarter, and the Chiefs still have just three points. But when Nick Bosa goes in, that's what they're trying to get to have happen, Nick Bosa to move in. Then Mahomes can run out towards the top of the screen. That's the way this play is designed to work. Well, when it begins, does it work? Yeah, Nick Bosa definitely falling for it here. Pa uh, Patrick Mahomes now has room to run. Mahomes takes advantage, and that helped set up the field goal drive and kind of allowed the Chiefs to start to get back into it. And number three on the list, well, we're sticking with kind of the same idea. This was a much more important play, though. So it's the same exact play, but the reason why it's getting on the list again is because of how much more important it was here. A fourth down and one. Yes, the Chiefs did a good job of outsmarting Bosa on that last one, but are you really going to go back to the well in the most important play in the game? Well, yes, they do. It's not exactly the same, but essentially the same. It works. Mahomes picks up the first down, and they are able to convert. Really well done by Patrick Mahomes. Really well done by the you know the entire Chiefs in general. Maybe not the uh, really well done by uh, Bosa. You could say that's number three. Number two is this one, which you see when it begins. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, half of outsmarting someone is your opponent making a mistake. Zay Flowers realistically should not be diving for the goal line right here. I think he's frustrated. He wants a touchdown. Just you know, run forward, make sure you protect the football. You probably could get the first down or you, you might be able to get the touchdown anyway. So just try and do that without lunging out. But for former Kansas City Chief Legereus Sneed, yes, he is no, no longer with the Chiefs, but uh, was with this game, of course, uh, you're going to see really, again, what do you do in this situation? I think so many guys would just try and make a tackle, but he reads that Flowers is looking to lunge out and go for the goal line. So Sneed has the awareness to punch the ball out instead, takes advantage of that opponent's mistake. Incredible athletic play, but also incredible awareness by Sneed to realize what was going on and to be able to make a real devastating play uh, there. That's number two on the list. And number one is this one. So it's a huge point in the game in the Super Bowl. It's a third down and four. If the 49ers convert here, they realistically win the game. It's not guaranteed, but realistically, they're probably winning the game with a conversion right here. And also, it says third and four. It's really third and five, but okay, whatever. Uh, a conversion can win it. But this is what the Chiefs are doing. They're blitzing. They are sending, uh, you know, not just anybody, but they're sending Trent McDuffie. Their all-pro slot corner is going to be the guy blitzing. And if this works and they can get a straight shot to Purdy, it could definitely disrupt this play. But if it fails, you've taken your best corner out of the, not your best corner, but your, you know, probably your best corner in this situation of, in a, you know, short-range situation out of the play altogether. However, it works like a charm. He's able to get there, knocks the ball away, and the Chiefs would, uh, you know, hold him to a field goal, score a game-tying field goal of their own, and win in overtime. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Those are some of the smartest uh, plays the Chiefs made, or the times they outsmarted their opponents in the postseason. Which ones did I leave off the list? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.